Hey everyone, in this video we will talk about using the new Citadel Contrast Colors. To start off, I should say, we are hobbyist level painters. We're yeah. not uh, <laughs> pro level. Um, um, and we didn't get the paints for free. Nothing came from Workshop or Citadel or anything like that. We've just been waiting, mm -hmm. uh, like everyone else who's just a normal painter, and um, got them two days ago? Yeah. A uh, day ago. Day ago, yeah. Yeah, got them a day <laughs> <of> ago. <laughs> and uh, And painted some stuff up. So what do you think? Uh, so my initial reaction uh, when I first started painting the mini I was like mm, this is not quite what I was expecting mm -hmm. uh, I think that's partially for two reasons one uh, I was painting dryad so I was using the dark brown mm -hmm. color and second the first mini that I painted we had primed but it wasn't maybe the most even uh, super white yeah. primer. That leads us to our first thing to keep in mind if you want to use the colors. You need to have a really good uh, bright white primer mm -hmm. coat on there. If you're using minis that are come pre-primed or the plastic is a really light shade, I wouldn't trust that. You really need to get a good even bright white primer base on there if you want to use the Citadel colors, the contrast colors, um, to their full potential. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't quite how I expected it. And then the second one, I went ahead and did a brush primer and got a really good white coat of that. And I did notice a difference between the two, as you can see here. For me, I think that this will probably be my go-to paint for basing. Mm -hmm. You know, after I've got my primer on there, when I look at my different models, um, this is probably be how I base because it did save me a lot of time there. You know, you put on that thick coat and it absolutely is a thicker coat. Yeah. Um, although I guess I'm looking forward to our future tutorials where we use this because now you can't yell at me for not thinning down my paints because you're not supposed to. Don't at me, bro. It does feel weird when you're first painting them though because it is a thick paint. There's a few things... It gets a little blotchy in some of the flatter areas. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see them on the pauldrons of my Thousand Suns and the the parts of the armor here that are a little flatter. You can see it's a little blotchy and it'll spot. Um, it'll you'll have it where it sort of sort of pulls away and you get those little white specks that you have to go through and touch up. And you need to make sure that you're touching those up while everything is still wet because once it dries. It looks weird and you're defeating the purpose. You're not supposed to have to go through and put in layer after layer of the contrast. And in some ways it acts a little bit like an ink. I found just how I moved the brush around was similar ways of when I'm using like the inks and shades versus regular paint. And then also once it's dried, if you go back and try and touch it up, it's going to get blotchy because you're layering that double yeah. color there. When it comes to layering, uh, so this is one thing. Overall, I don't think, I don't think Citadel lied to us. I don't think Citadel was dishonest, but you know, all of the, a lot of the stuff that was coming out was saying one thick coat, one thick coat, and you would see that uh, really cool miniature of the, the plague bearer, right? I think that's what it was called. And it said this was done with all contrast colors. And I bet it was by one of those professionals. Uh, but when it comes to just throwing on one thick layer, and uh, one thick coat, and then trying to take a second contrast color and put that on over the top of it, it ain't gonna work. You can kind of see it here in the, uh, we were doing some tests on the sprue, and you can see on the sprue where I layered over this, uh, my blue and yellow, it just became green. So you cannot use these to layer, at least not layer the way that you would layer different base coats of the other paints. Now, again, I don't think that Citadel was dishonest, but I think that a lot of us thought it was going to be able to just uh, work in that way. Uh, so keep that in mind. But you discovered a really cool thing about layering with it. Yeah, I think um, I discovered I tried layering it over a metallic, mm -hmm. and that gave it this really cool iridescent, uh, yeah. I did it on one of the little beetles for the uh, hunters, and really liked the look of that. I'm probably going to try doing that with the yeah. big beetle uh, in my Sylvaneth army. Uh, and I also think you could purposefully layer it 
especially for doing um, some of the flesh tones. Like if you yeah. got rotting flesh, layering up two different colors to kind of intermix yeah. and get those weird. Absolutely. If you've got if you've got a bunch of Nurgle things, that might oh, be a yeah. really fun place to try to experiment. A big selling point about contrast is that it's meant to be faster. Yeah. And it is, kind of. Um, it was easier to use, and I don't know that painting my Thousand Sun Mini was faster overall. Well, it probably was faster overall, but I used my time differently. Mm. Mm. I found, uh, for the dryads, definitely faster. I oh, painted, cool. uh, well, the first one I did, like, kind of a speed through painting and had it done five to ten minutes. Oh, yeah. And table ready. Not the best mini, but table ready. Yeah. The second one, I took my time and probably spent maybe 15, 20 minutes on that. And then I also went through and did some detail touch-up bits here and there. That made it a lot faster, and I was pretty happy with it. Those pieces don't have a lot of detail, so I think yeah, give it, putting well, the time into taking a little bit more time with the contrast, getting yeah. it nice and clean lines... Uh, can save time because I'm not worried about going through and doing like all the details with the edges and the... what well, and is your mini is your model does it have the right kind of pieces that work well for contrast mm. the skeleton in this one and the uh, loincloth look pretty cool but yeah you can kind of see where with the dark wood it's probably gonna get lost and from 10 feet away it's just a brown thing on the table yeah uh, and so it's just being aware of those types of things mm-hmm and in, you can see it right here in my Thousand Suns. You know, here's one that just has all of the contrast on it. But then this one has the contrast for all of the blue. And then I went through and added in my metallics and did some edge highlighting. I combined the two different techniques. And I'm really happy um, how my very first Thousand Suns piece turned out. And I know that I'll continue to... Uh, improve and get better at it for the rest of the army. I think that maybe the trick is get that really good primer base on there and then um, it's faster but it's not sloppy. So if you've got um, a model that's blue and red and yellow, well you layer in the contrast, all of the blue being careful not to co cover up the primer. Mm -hmm. And then the red, careful not to cover up or overlap. And then the yellow, careful not to cover up and overlap. I think that might actually be a really good way to start to use these. And if you try that, let us know how it works. For me, I think the contrast paint is really good for if you want to get your army on the table fast. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really looking at making stuff to enter into painting competitions, yeah. maybe less so. Uh, yeah. Or you need to really practice with it um, just because the layering and especially how even uh, and it it doesn't get as evenly distributed, mm -hmm. uh, at least when I, the little bit I was playing with it, as just going through and doing base, shadow, highlight, yeah. edge, that sure. you're looking for in like a painting competition. Yeah. And I don't think that contrast is going to revolutionize or threaten the way that we paint our miniatures. This is something I've been seeing in some of the forums on Reddit, some of the conversations, and I think it's really crappy, so don't be this kind of person. People that are getting mad saying, oh, well, just anybody is going to be able to start to compete um, with the painting competitions, and you're not going to be able to tell the difference between contrast colors and skill. First of all, that's not going to be true at all. And second of all, what a horrible, what a, what a mean attitude to have about things. I mean, I think Sid, what it might revolutionize is it's going to make it easier for beginners to feel good about the way that their models look on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not a bad thing. I don't, I don't care how long you've been playing this. If you think it's bad that new people are playing in our hobby... I, 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 think, I think you're being a jerk. The contrast colors are not going to take the place of careful time and skill and honing your abilities. And I don't think that's what they were ever meant to do. Mm -hmm. It's one more new tool in your painter's toolbox. Do you want to keep buying contrast colors even though they're probably going to duplicate a lot of the other paints in our library? I think selectively, yes. All right, so uh, we're probably not going to run out and buy every single one of them. Mm 
yeah, I also, I want to continue to add this to our library, my paint library. Wait, in the comments below, what do you call your collection of paint? I call it our paint library. I don't know what that is. Anyway, so let us know that. Overall, I like the contrast colors. We picked a bunch up. I'm going to absolutely continue to use them, and I'll learn how to use them better. In fact, I'm looking forward to making another video a few months from now mm -hmm. and saying, okay, now I've learned the technique for this a little bit better. So have you checked out uh, the Citadel contrast colors? Uh, what do you think? Let us know down in the comments. Have you found an especially cool way to use it? Oh, I, yeah. I'm looking forward to all of those discoveries. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Tucker. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. We put out stuff every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure that you come and check back, like, share, subscribe, and all of that kind of fun stuff. Until next time, I'm Dawn. And I'm Ryan. And this is Rural for Initiative. Bye. Bye. A big selling point about this is that it's meant to be faster, and it is. I don't. I don't know why I paused like that. That was really. <laughs> that was. That was really weird.